Aman is one of the most well-known tuners out there. But people are really divided when it comes to this German tuner. Some people love them and some people hate them. The main criticism towards them is that they only build cars for rich risers and that they destroy great cars. Personally, I don't agree with that. About the performance part, Haman offers power upgrades, but most of the people go only for the body kit since they want that expensive look. And about the second part, you can do whatever you want with your supercar as long as you drive it, no matter if you make your Ferrari go faster or look better, as long as you drive that car, I'm okay with that. So hello guys and welcome back to another video, and here is the story of Haman. Haman was founded in 1986 by Richard Haman. Born in 1957, Richard showed a huge interest on cars and racing since an early age, and he started competing only at the age of 6. And in 1966, when he was only 9 years old, Richard won his first competition. And for the next 20 years, Richard would race all over the world with different cars and on different competitions, including here Group C, DTM and Formula 3. Richard raced on more than 700 races, when he reached the podium 300 times, 103 of which were first places, and 3 of them were Group 5 wins, when Richard won by driving a BMW M1. In 1986, Richard, feeling accomplished with his racing career, decided to go independent and create his own tuning house, which was called Haman Motorsport. Richard had used this name before on some of the cars that he had raced with, but now he would work as a fully independent tuning shop, which would mostly focus on BMWs. And the first car to come from this new tuning house was a turbocharged M3, with 348 horsepower, enough to reach a top speed of 271 km per hour and to accelerate from 0 to 100 in 5.1 seconds. But since its early days, Haman showed that wasn't your average tuner, because also in 1986 they presented another E30, the Haman Laguna Seca 3.5 Turbo. Richard removed the 2.3 liter engine of the M3 and replaced it with a reworked straight 6 3.5 liter engine, which came from the 745i. The result 410 horsepower, enough to reach a top speed of 303 km per hour and to reach 100 in 4.9 seconds. With Laguna Seca, Richard definitely set a path for himself and his company. Hammond would continue to tune BMWs for the rest of the 80s and the early 90s, but for the most part, they would stay quite quiet. Until 1994 when they presented one of the craziest works, but also one of the least known ones. The Haman F40. Now this F40 has undergone one of the most drastic changes a F40 has ever received. First, the body kit. Haman replaced almost all the body panels and instead packed the F40 with this new body kit, which clearly took inspiration from the LM but a lot of work was also done under the hood, where Aman replaced the IHI turbos for a set of triple Ks, which raised the power output from 470 to 620 horsepower. With this additional power, the top speed was at 350 km per hour, and the acceleration time at 3.8 seconds. From a tuner that looked like was only focused on BMWs, looked like Haman was turning into a Ferrari tuner, since after the F40 a number of other Ferraris were presented. First was the 512M Haman, which received a white body kit. And I'm not a fan of this body kit because it just doesn't look good in my opinion. In terms of power, the car only received 300 horsepower more than the regular 512M, and this thanks to the ECU. And basically the same story goes for the 355. Like after the introduction of the Laguna Seca, Haman would go quiet for some time, even though there would be some minor releases, but nothing that special. 
But things will start to change on the beginning of the 2000s, when the beside new brands, new technologies and new styles would start applying in order to get maximum power out of these cars. Since they have worked on many cars, I'm only going to talk about the top 7 Hamans. Since I don't want to sound repetitive, since most of the cars are basically the same and aren't that special. In the 90s, Haman offered upgrades for the E36, but nothing that was really special. But this wasn't the case for the E46. Originally, they offered aero kits and minor power upgrades, but in 2001, on their 15th birthday, they presented the Laguna Seca 2. And like the original Laguna Seca, the car is just totally crazy. Instead of using a straight 6 like they did on the E30, Hamann went for the newly introduced BMW 6 liter V12. And if this wasn't enough, they also completely rebuilt the engine, with new pistons, crankshaft and camshaft. And all this increased the power to 480 horsepower, enough to propel the car from 0 to 100 in 4.2 seconds and to reach a top speed of 312 km per hour. And like with all the other V12 conversions done by other tuners, the car was a thrill to drive. In the 2000, Haman would add more brands on their lineup, and one of these brands was Lamborghini. The first Hama Lamborghini came in 2004, but the car isn't that special, and this can be said for most of the Gallardos that came later, except the Victory 2. The body kit is pure Haman, especially when the car is painted in black and red, which in a sort of way is a Haman trademark. In terms of power, isn't that crazy, only some ECU tuning. But what kind of tuner would they be if they didn't touch Mercedes? And so in 2008 came the Volcano, based on the SLR McLaren. The Volcano had 700 horsepower and 612 pound-foot of torque. This thanks to the new exhaust system and SEU programming. The top speed was at 350 km per hour, while the acceleration time at 3.5 seconds. While the body kit on this car is just mental. In general, all the tuned SLRs are crazy, mostly due to the shape of the car, and the Volcano is no exception from this. Just that this two tone paint job makes the car look a bit ugly, I would say. In 2007 came the Thunder, which was another crazy 3 series. Based on the E90 M3, Haman decided to replace the V8 engine with a V10 from the M5. And after the work of Haman was completed, the engine produced 552 horsepower, which were enough to reach 335 km per hour and to hit 100 in 4.2 seconds. The body kit was a bit more settled here compared to the other Haman projects.
e se 2013 Geneva Motor Show ha man presentet të Nervudo, based on the Lamborghini Aventador. First, the car has received a full carbon fiber treatment in typical Hammond fashion, and to go with a body kit the power was increased from 690 to 760 horsepower. Sadly, there are no performance numbers about this car. A similar story goes for the Hawk, presented in 2011, which was based on the SLS. The power was increased from 563 to 636, which was more than the Black Series had, which definitely says something. The body kit looks like it was inspired from the GT3 SLS, with all the exposed carbon fiber, the aero kit and the giant rear wing. But the car that made me love Haman is the Haman HM 7.0. Now I'm a huge fan of the enlarged versions of the Mercedes M120. No matter if it is uh, from AMG, Brabus, Koenig or whoever, the car that carried these engines are just so awesome in my opinion. Now the E65 is a car that divides people and also divides the BMW on before and after Chris Bengal. And like in the case of the E60, I'm also divided. Sometimes I like this car, sometimes I don't. It all depends on the angle that I'm looking at. Even though some of the tuned E65s look so beautiful. Anyway, the main focus here is the engine. Haman increased the displacement from 5972cc to 7080cc. This was done by using a new pistons, camshafts and crankshaft and also by boring out the engine. Thanks to this, the power was raised from 440 horsepower to 510 horsepower. Two years later, in 2005, Haman presented the HM 7.1, based on the facelifted E65. And like the name suggests, the displacement now was at 7100 cc. The top speed was at 312 km per hour, while the acceleration time at 5 seconds. Haman continues to offer plenty of options for many cars, but sadly for the last 7 years they have been without Richard, which passed away on March 2011 at the age of 53. So guys, thank you for watching, see you next time.